Hi, I'm Kyle Ingham from The Distilled Man, and up next, I'm going to talk about how to inscribe a book and why it's so important to always include a personalized message whenever you give a book as a gift. You ever pull a book off your shelf and you crack it open for the first time in a long time and you see that old handwritten inscription from the person who gave it to you? Now, I'm not talking about the illegible autograph from Mr. Famous Pants, who you, who you saw when you queued up for three hours in, in Barnes & Noble that one day. I'm talking about the old, dusty copy of Catch-22 that your uncle gave you. You were 16, it was that summer, you were learning how to drive stick, you just started shaving regularly for the first time, and your uncle decides, hey, maybe this guy's ready to read some real fiction. Giving someone a book with a personalized message inside is one of the most thoughtful gifts you can give to somebody. So why inscribe books that you give as gifts? Presumably, if you're giving someone a book, it's because you've already read it yourself, you really enjoyed it, and knowing what you know about that person, you really think they would enjoy it as well. Or, because you know a lot about that person, you did some research, you found this book, and you really think it might be up their alley. The point is, giving someone a book is one of the more personal gifts you can give, but if you don't put a personal message inside it, you're kind of missing an opportunity. Okay, to use a really bad analogy, it's sort of like sending someone an attachment via email, uh, a really special attachment that you think is really great and you really want them to see, without including anything in the body of the email. Now, imagine that that attachment was supposed to be their birthday present. Seems even worse, right? And kind of impersonal. But for the recipient, a book inscription is like a dusty little time capsule that reminds them of a specific point in their life or a specific person, and it takes them back. And it makes the book more than just a collection of you know, paper and cardboard and glue and fabric and whatever else the books are made out of, and it makes it a keepsake, something that's special. So when should you inscribe a book? Well, books have been getting inscribed as long as people have been giving books as gifts. So I really think that any time you give someone a book as a gift, you should inscribe it. You know, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, birthdays, graduations, retirement. Basically, any time you give a book as a gift, write a personal message inside. The recipient doesn't even need to be able to read the inscription. In fact, a lot of interesting inscriptions actually are ones written in baby books, where obviously the person knows that the baby's not going to be able to read it, but you know, years from now, they, they pull out this book, and it's really going to be a nice keepsake and, a, and a remembrance. Now, the only time you may want to avoid inscribing a book is if you're buying, say, like a college textbook for someone, and you know that just based on the sheer volume of the books and the type of book that they're going to get rid of it at the end of the semester. But in this case, you actually may want to have the student inscribe it and inscribe it to the person who's going to get it next. And this is actually a really funny example I found of that happening where the student wrote in the book to the next person who's going to get the textbook and it's sort of like a little chain letter that will go on and on hopefully. Okay, but what if inscribing the book messes it up? Well, there's a couple naysayers out there. One group says, you know, I never want to inscribe a book I give as a gift because what if the recipient wants to take it back and they don't like it? And the other group of naysayers says, well, you know, you should never inscribe a book you're giving as a gift, especially if it's a kind of an older book or a rare book, because it'll ruin its resale value. Well, I think both of those ideas are kind of crazy. Is it possible that the recipient is not going to like your gift and that they may want to take it back? Yeah, that's a possibility, but that doesn't mean that you should leave it devoid of all personalization. You know, worst case, they can take the book to a used bookstore and drop it off. In fact, I'm actually amazed at all the used books that I see with cute little inscriptions in there that clearly someone didn't treasure enough to, to keep the book. On a positive note, those inscribed books can be a real treasure for people in used bookstores. You come across these books that have these really interesting or really unique inscriptions in them and it's like a kind of like a window into other people's lives and it can be almost more interesting than fiction. Now as far as the resale value, if you're buying the books for a collector who's really going to use this as sort of a financial investment, you know, maybe you should just focus on buying them thoughtful books and not worry about buying them rare books because at the end of the day your gift really should be about getting something uniquely for them and it's not going to be as special if you know they're just going to kind of see it as an investment and then resell it two years later and who cares if the book's not going to be worth a ton of money and that's again that's not the point 
or if you really think that they're going to still sell it no matter what, you can use a cheat that I'll mention in just a moment. So what should you write in your book inscription? Now a book inscription is all about adding a personal touch to what is already hopefully a personal gift, but it can also serve a practical purpose. And the tone of the inscription can vary widely depending on the person, depending on the situation, depending on the book, from you know, very serious to, to humorous uh, to, to downright weird sometimes. But regardless, most inscriptions do one or more of the following things. One, document when the book was given and who gave it. Two, explain why this particular book is meant for the recipient. Three, say what the giver thought was special about the book. Four, wish the recipient well on a specific occasion. Five, provide some life advice. Six, echo an idea from the book, sometimes using a quote. Seven, serve as a time capsule for posterity, especially when the giver or the recipient are no longer with us. And eight, contain enigmatic riddles and random musings. So where should you inscribe a book? Well, traditionally it would be on the top of the title page or on the inside cover, but really the point is to look for a page early on in the book that doesn't have a lot of other clutter on it so that the inscription will stand out. So like in this version of Great Expectations, I could probably do it on the inside cover here. Um, I wouldn't do it on this page because it's got so much clutter, uh, but probably even the next page, this title page, would be perfect because it's sort of at the beginning of the book and people are likely to read it. And there's plenty of real estate here and less clutter. So if you think the recipient's really going to be bothered by the fact that you've written in the book, you can do a cheat where you add the inscription on a separate piece of stationery inside. And this could be a good option for that collector too if you think they may try to resell the book later. Now the problem with the insert is if the person does mean to hold on to it, there's a much higher likelihood that it could fall out accidentally and be lost over the years. The inscribed book as greeting card. Now I haven't seen this in person but I have heard that some forward-thinking folks are starting to use inscribed books as greeting cards. So it's kind of a cool idea if you think about it. You know instead of buying a card that has someone else's words in it, you're buying a whole book that has someone else's words in it, but those words could be a classic. and a, They could be a book that the person really enjoys and you write inside the book the same way that you would inside a card, but now instead of it being a Hallmark card that they toss in a drawer or toss in a box, they can put it on their shelf and they can admire it for a lifetime. So to wrap it up, if you get a book for someone, please do write a personalized message in there. It really is not going to take you more than a few minutes, but the person may appreciate it for a lifetime. Hope you enjoyed this video. To see more videos like this, you can subscribe to the Distilled Man YouTube channel, and if you haven't already gotten a copy, click on the screen right now or in the link below and get a free copy of my 42-page ebook. Thanks again for watching, and until next time.